Eric here with HeatCable.com and today we're going to answer one of the most common questions that we run into online and that is how to calculate how much heat cable I need for my project. And so today we're going to actually show you a few things on how to measure it, what you're looking for, and proper anticipation of where to place everything so you get those correct calculations. In calculating your cable there are three primary things you're going to want to look at or consider and the first one is how deep into the roof you need to go. You can see we've already got clips in place right here because we've already calculated this, but if you need to go deeper into the roof, that's going to dictate how much cable you're gonna need. The second thing you're gonna to wanna to anticipate is how wide your gaps are needing to be between your loop points. The tighter that is, and of course the higher up the roof you go, the more cable you're gonna need. The other thing, the third thing, which is gonna determine a lot of the depth in the roof is how deep your eaves might be underneath. And so we'll measure those. We'll show you how to calculate and evaluate all three of these variables so you can get the right length of cable for your project. The number one tool you're gonna to need is a tape measure. Take your tape measure and the first thing you wanna do is calculate your spacing in the gap right here. And in this example, we've set these at 24 inches you can see this on the tape. And we've set our height at almost 24 inches. We're 23, but we want to land at a shingle exposure point where the, the seam or the lap is available. So we can glue our clips between the shingles, okay? So if I wanted to go deeper, I would probably jump up to the next shingle run and go 28 inches, or even the next one and go 34 inches. But one of the rules of thumb that you want to keep in mind is your triangular pattern in distance between the gap here is similar, close, or greater is the height up here. So the wider you go here and the more shallow you bring it down, the less efficient your system's going to be. The higher you go up in the roof and the more narrow your gap is, the more effective your system's going to end up melting the pattern out and keeping the water flowing. When considering too narrow or too wide, I can tell you this, too narrow might be where your cables are touching as they transition on the loop coming up. And too wide, ah, that's really tough. I've seen some really wide gaps and they're very inefficient. Uh, something that might even transition like this and then go down over there and you really lose a lot of effectiveness in your system when you come out to these really long stretches out this way. So again, my rule of thumb would be as wide as your gap is here, make it similar in the height or greater on the climb. So you're gonna to wanna to stay in that realm. One of the first things that I'm gonna do in measuring my roof is I wanna get my length from the other side of the roof all the way over to this point. So I'm gonna take my measure tape and a little tip that I use, send the tape through the gutter. So my measuring tape's 25 feet, and I know right down here to this gutter spike is 25 feet. So I'm gonna measure this last little bit over to the end. Right to there. And looks like I've got 25 foot. I got an extra five foot, five inches. So that tells me I got 30 feet, five inches to work with. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna make sure that when I put this together, it looks good when I'm done. So if I've got 30 feet and five inches, I wanna decide what's my spacing so I have exactly the same number of zigzags or the same size of zigzags all the way across. So let's do this on a calculator. So I got 30 feet times 12 inches gives me 360 inches. I got an extra five, so I'm gonna add five to that. So 365 inches and divide that by, like I said, 24 inches is usually my base point. So I'm gonna divide that by 24 inches. And I get 15.2. So eh, I'm gonna have roughly 15 loops across this whole thing. And I'm probably gonna bring each end in two and a half to get rid of that five inches. So that, uh, that second thing that we need to look at is how deep is our eave? We need to measure the depth of the eave so we know how deep we gotta go. We'll take your tape measure, and one of the things you can do is come underneath the roof right here and measure your tape all the way to the back of the wall, 
and bring it out to where your gutter is right here. So now I can see right here, I gotta be 20 inches. So 20 inches is the depth underneath. So if I put my tape measure up right here, and you know, generally eyeball this 20 inches. Here's my wall about here. And this, if I put my clips up right here, I'm a good six inches into the warm wall zone, which is what we want. You can go deeper if you want. If you've got a severe issue, uh, you can go deeper, but this is sufficient right here. So I know my wall's here. I'm gonna put my clips here. I am good to go. So now that I know how deep I need to go, I can mark my roof point where that should be. I know my spacing for my clips, and I'll just mark it and mark it. At that point, you go ahead and create a triangle with your tape measure, and you can measure exactly how much cable you're going to need. And in this situation, I'm gonna use roughly 54 inches of cable for one loop. And how many have we got? 15. We can multiply that. All right, so 15 loops times 54 inches equals 810 divided by 12 inches per foot, 67.5 feet. So now that I got my length, I know I need 67 and a half feet of cable just for my zigzags across the top. At that point, I will tell you this, cable is not always straight up and straight down. You got some curvature in some of those lines, so I'm probably gonna add like two feet, maybe a foot, just to account for the extra fluff. And I would rather have too much cable in my system than not enough. You can always tuck the end loop somewhere and kind of hide it. So I'm gonna add an extra two feet. We need to add a few other things in, like our gutter, our downspout, any other zones on the roof that we need to integrate, like valleys, crickets, or other features that are critical for ice dam buildup. So the other thing I wanna add here is my gutter. I already know it's 30.5 feet for the gutter, but I also have these end points right here that I wanna count for. I want a piece of heat cable to come back to the end of the gutter and come back this way before I go up on my roof edge. So I'm actually gonna measure that, which is 12 inches. So I'm gonna add another two feet to this point and use that cable to transition up to my roof. I'm gonna to wanna to get the downspout measurement as well. And while I'm on a ladder and up high, this is a great time to do it. So I'm gonna take my tape measure and I'm gonna measure from the top of the downspout down to the ground. I have 13 foot six inches. So I'm gonna add that 13 foot six inches along with this transition over to the side. Right there's two feet of transition. So I'm gonna put 15.6 inches, 15 and a half feet, and add that to my system. Your drain and where the heat cable's gotta go is the next thing you need to consider with these downspouts. If the drain or your downspout daylights open like this and just stops, you wanna make sure the heat cable's at least coming out the end so that the heat, the, the water can escape before it freezes on the end. If it goes into a drain down below, make sure you go in the drain two, three, maybe four feet to get it down below frost point. But if your drain extending further out, it doesn't go very shallow or very deep and it's very shallow and it freezes, you might wanna consider taking that heat cable further. Only you would know in that situation. So calculating this out, I know I've got uh, 67.5 feet for the zigzags on the roof and I'm adding an extra two feet just for the extra buffer. That, uh, we're also gonna add our 30 0.5 feet for the gutter. We're gonna add 15.5 total for the downspout. And we're gonna add an extra uh, four feet for our drain. And that gives us 119.5. But if you remember that little two foot section up top, I wanna add that for the end of the gutter. So I have a total of 121.5. Now, if there are other areas that I need to consider, I wanna add those in. But now I know exactly what I need to order to cover the area that I needed. So now that you know how to calculate your roof, remember those three things. You wanna go see, you wanna see how high you need to go on the roof, what the depth is underneath, and then calculate your zigzag patterns on that. Don't forget to add any extra areas on the roof, like your downspouts, drain areas, crickets, valleys, or even drain pipes on the roof that need to be covered. So after calculating everything, add it all together, and you should have a good number. Now, one thing to remember, it's always better to have a little extra in your system 
than not enough. Now that you know how to calculate your roof, you can order all the material you need at heatcable.com. If you need additional help, please reach out to us. We're always here at heatcable.com.